welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the second installment of my Fair Skin Fiesta series. Um, last week I focused on my favourite blushes and highlighters and bronzers for pale skin and this week I'm going to be doing my favourite base products which covers foundations, concealers and powders and things like that. So the first product I want to talk about is MAC's Studio Fix Fluid in NW10. This is a medium to full coverage foundation. It has a um, sun protection factor of 15 so it gives you a little bit of sun protection. Um, it is quite, it's a very liquidy foundation. I find that it blends in really well, like I use a buffing brush to blend it in. Um, but what I love about this is it does have quite a lot of coverage on it. A little bit goes a long way. It, um, for me I find it lasts really well throughout the day as well. It doesn't tend to break up or go patchy or anything on me personally. I have normal to combo skin. I'm not sure whether they make NC10, but if they don't, NC15 is still a very pale foundation. It is more of a um, yellow based, so like warm skin toned kind of colouring, um, if you find that the NW is too pinky. But yeah, this is quite a reasonable price as well, like in New Zealand this retails for $60, um, which I think for a high end foundation is kind of on the lower end, the spectrum of cost wise. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a fantastic basic kind of foundation. You can wear it every day. It's a good going out one as well. I don't think it causes much flashback, even though it has SPF in it. I find it to work perfectly fine. My next favourite foundation for pale skin is Rimmel's Match Perfection in Light Porcelain. This is such a beautiful foundation. This is a medium coverage foundation. You can definitely share it out to be light if you want it to as well. Um, it's very liquidy, again quite similar in texture to Studio Fix. Um, but a nice drugstore dupe. This again, the light porcelain colour is very um, cool toned, so it's got quite a bit of pinkiness to it. Um, suits my complexion really well. I don't know if they've got one that's as light as this for um, warmer skin tones, but I will be talking about um, at the end of the video some extra um, options for people with a warmer skin tone because I, even though I don't own them in my collection because obviously I'm not warm skin toned, I do know of some great options for you warm toned ladies out there. Um, but this foundation has SPF 18, so again a bit of coverage, um, a little bit more than Studio Fix, but this is great in the summertime and stuff because it feels very light on the skin, it does, you don't really feel like you're wearing makeup with this. Um, it was also a really good foundation to use with the powder under foundation technique. It's quite liquidy and it doesn't cake up with the powder, but it makes your makeup last all day. My next favourite foundation for pale skin is Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation in number 2. This is a great option if you want something that's completely free of SPF. It doesn't have any um, SPF in it and so therefore makes a fantastic foundation for photography if you're going to be doing wedding makeup or um, yeah, you're going to be going to a ball or something. This is perfect because it won't cause any flashback but it comes in a huge range of colours. Um, and this is very, very pale. This is actually paler than my MAC and my um, Match Perfection. So if, if these are even a smidgen too dark still, this is very, very, very pale. Um, this works really well for me in winter. In summer, I almost feel like it might even be too light because I do find in summer, even though I don't tan, I go like half a shade, like half a shade darker. So um, just, it's more because my freckles become more prominent in summer. So I find that like the others work much better, but this is really nice in winter. Um, I use, at the moment I use a buffing brush to blend this in, um, but you can use your hands as well. It is quite a sort of, it's like a liquid foundation, but it's a little bit thicker in texture, slightly, but it's pretty liquidy. It's definitely not like a mousse or anything. Um, yeah, I've only really shown you like liquid foundations, but that's because I love liquid foundations as opposed to mousses and stuff. There just isn't, there isn't the range of colours out there in those moussey type foundations. The coverage level on the Illamasqua as well is anything. You can make this super, super lightweight or you can build it up to be medium to full coverage. It's got a really good like spectrum of coverage levels, I guess. It just builds on itself really nicely without looking cakey. I know that Illamasqua for as a brand is quite hard to get hold of um, in New Zealand as opposed to Australia where they have it in Myers. Um, but you can order it online. I know that ASOS stocks Illamasqua, but they also, the Illamasqua website themselves, do ship internationally. My next um, base product is actually a tinted moisturizer for those ladies out there that want something that's really light, um, that just kind of evens your skin tone without looking like you're wearing any makeup at all. And this, the one I love that's really pale is by The Balm. This is The Balm Shelter Tinted Moisturizer. This has SPF 18, so it's got a decent amount of um, 
sun protection factor. It is very pale. It's quite cool toned, but um, leaning more so to cool neutral. So even if you do have a warmer skin tone, you could probably still get away with this because it's not like heavily pink or anything. It's sort of in the middle. Um, very, very, very pale. Again, probably on par with the Illamasqua for paleness. Um, and it's just such a beautiful formula. Like it makes your skin feel beautiful and nourished because it is a moisturizer, but it's got just enough coverage to sort of even out your skin tone and get rid of any redness, but you still want to use like a concealer to conceal some spots because this won't really cover that. But if you want something really lightweight and very invisible for the summer, this is a fantastic choice. My last foundation is actually a mineral foundation, like a powder foundation, and it is by Bare Minerals. It's their original basic mineral foundation. And this one has an SPF of 15, so it's again got quite a bit of sun factor, which is good for fair skin. I feel like if you've got pale skin wearing a um, sunscreen in your foundation just gives that extra coverage. Um, but I know someone commented on my last video saying they wanted me to mention a product with no SPF because they react to it or something like that. So if you are that viewer, this one will be great for you. You won't react to this because the yellow mask has no sunscreen in it. Um, but this is the foundation in the colour Fair. This is actually very, very light. I'm actually today wearing, for filming, because I like a bit of full coverage for filming, my MAC Studio Fix Fluid with this on top. And this gives me sort of a double layer amount of coverage, but um, this mineral makeup is so undetectable on the skin. It adds no cakiness whatsoever to my Studio Fix. It sets it in place, but it doesn't... It's not like your traditional powders where you look powdery and matte doesn't add any matteness at all it just basically gives you coverage but a gorgeous kind of skin like luminosity to your skin like I'm absolutely in love with this at the moment I will be repurchasing this again and again this fair color is quite neutral I think it would go well on either warm or cool toned skins it doesn't seem to throw very much pink at all so it's great it's very neutral I feel like any skin tone that is light could work with this. I even think this would work up to sort of NW15, um, maybe yeah, 20 might be pushing it. I think they've got a color called light, which is after fair. But if you're sort of, you know, NW10, NW15, this would be a really, really good um, powder to own. It's something that isn't too powdery. <laughs> Speaking of powders, we might as well talk about like pressed powders and loose powders. If you like a more matte finish or you want your makeup to really last all day, powders are a great option. My favorite powder of all time is the NARS Light Reflecting Powder. This is that sort of loose, very transparent, translucent powder. Like you don't detect it on the skin at all, um, but it does really set your powder, set your foundation in place. Um, it's very expensive though, which is why I don't have very much left and I'm sort of savoring it for special occasions. But this will go on pale skin beautifully because it's so translucent, like it can actually go on any skin tone, but you won't, it won't add any coverage, it'll just lock it in place. Another great loose powder that I like that's more of a drugstore option is the Face of Australia Translucent Loose Powder. This, you get so much product in here. This is a gigantic container. Um, this is a very finely milled powder for something that is mostly talc. So this does give very good mattifying um, properties if you have oily skin. Um, and this makes your makeup last so well. It works really well as a base powder to the um, Match Perfection foundation this goes be beautifully underneath this and they just work miracles miracles to make your foundation last all day um, and this is only like 11 12 dollars in Australia it's so cheap but if you can't get your hands on this if you live in New Zealand I suggest the match perfection powder it's loose like this and it's very similar in texture um, it's just a good dupe because we don't have face of Australia in New Zealand a fantastic little pressed powder that I often keep in my handbag when I'm out if I get in a little bit oily because um, I sort of have normal to combo skin if I can sometimes get a little bit oily in my t-zone um, so I keep this in my handbag. It's the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in 115 Ivory. And this is such a pale um, powder. It's extremely light. It doesn't have that much coverage actually when it's on the skin, but it's great at just mattifying your T-zone. Um, and yeah, it certainly won't make you look any browner than you want to be. It's, it's very pale. Um, and it comes with the little secret compartment. Oh, secret compartment in there as well. And a little sponge, which I don't normally use, but if I'm out and about, I don't like carrying a brush with me. So I will just touch it up with a um, puff. I actually love puffs for, pre for loose powder, but I don't like them for pressed powder. I prefer brush, which is really weird. So, eh. But this is super inexpensive as well, and it comes in a great, like, sturdy wee container, which is great. You can throw it in your bag, and it's so cheap. Like, if it did get broken, I wouldn't cry about it. I'd just go buy a new one, because it's only, like, 
I don't know, 12, 13, 14 dollars or something from the supermarket. So the last two products I want to talk about are concealers. The first one is my holy grail of holy grail concealers. The NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Chantilly. This is the most beautiful concealer. It blends out seamlessly. It is very full coverage. You can even use this as a foundation if you wanted to just put it where you needed it and blend it kind of from the center of your face out to the outsides, you know, use it sparingly and it can if you just put it on your blemishes it just makes your skin look amazing. It is extremely neutral toned so it will go so well on cool toned skin, I find it does anyway, and it also would be perfect for if you've got a warmer skin tone so I love when concealers are very neutral because you can sort of swing both ways with it. Um, yeah it's just a gorgeous concealer. I didn't like it first under my eyes but I've discovered now that if you use less product um, like it's so full coverage you don't need much so use a tiny bit of product under the eyes blend it out with a brush and then set it with a wee bit of like mineral powder or something it will just last all day and it won't crease I just found that it creased a bit when I first started using it under my eyes but that's because I was using too much product so just use it sparingly um, it's just such a great all-round concealer it covers spots covers like redness darkness um, under the eyes so if you want to do it all concealer that's like the perfect pale color this is amazing, you cannot go past this. You can pick this up from Mecha Cosmetica uh, or Mecha Maxima in Australia. And yeah, it's beautiful. One of my favorite products in this video. The last product I wanna talk about is a highlighting concealer by MAC. It is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighter in Radiant Rose. And this was like my go-to product. I would cry if, this, like, if I didn't have this on me and I had to do my makeup because it just, transforms your face. You look glowy and awake under your eyes. But um, I did actually run out quite a while ago because there's nothing coming out anymore. So I do need to pick up a new one. Um, that was kind of when I discovered, because I ran out of this one day and I was like, I'm just going to have to use my NARS under my eyes. And I sort of made this work and now I love it. So that's why I haven't rushed out to buy this. But it is beautiful. It's quite, it's basically the most pale kind of like Touche Clat, you know, highlighting pen that you will find on the market. Um, and it's, but this is a very pink based. I know they've got a yellow based one available. I can't remember the name, but this one is perfect for you pale with cool toned skin like me. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did and you found it useful. Leave me a comment below if you've got any other suggestions for pale skin that you want to tell me about. I'd love, I'm always in the hunt, I guess, for pale skin products. Don't forget to subscribe as well and I will see you all next week for my favourite lip products for pale skin video. Until then, see you next time. Bye.